One time I was with my friend Bhakti Bringa Govinda Swami Maharaj. We were visiting um, London and um, I was asked to lead the Guru Puja. So we, um, me and Govinda Maharaj, you know, I was, he was playing Murdanga and I was, you know, singing and everything. And the kirtan went on for pretty long, like really long, like we were just doing. <laughs> and the temple president, he came in, he whispered in my ear, he said, Maharaj, it's time for class, you have to stop the kirtan. But I don't know, it's sometimes some kirtans, they just keep going and going and we, we transcend and transcend and, you know, we don't want to ever stop. So that kirtan went on for like three hours. <laughs> and it was like 11 o'clock in the morning. So then, you know, the kirtan finished, and Jai Om Shripad Paramahansa, like we said, the Prema Duwani prayers. And then the <laughs> temple president, he said to me, he said, Maharaj, what about class? I said, Prabhu, that was my class. <laughs> Because that's what we hear, isn't it? That Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalo, Nasteva, 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 Gutir Anyata. That in this vicious, nasty age of Kali, uh, the most simple and sublime means for becoming God realized. Understanding who we are, who is God, Krishna, and what, our, what is our eternal relationship with Him, and how to revive that relationship. It all comes from three words, Hare, Krishna, and Ram, in the form of the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Of course, we have so much supporting us um, as Vaishnavas to attain that Param Gatim, that supreme goal of going back home, back to Godhead. It's a challenge. Even Krishna says in the Gita, Vasudeva Sivamati Samahatma Sadulava. Only after many, many, many births does one come to the point of full surrender and come to me? But the good fortune of being born in this horrible age, something like, what do they say? The silver lining in the dark cloud. There's a dark cloud, but sometimes something good happens <laughs> in a, the worst of times. So in the worst of times, what has happened? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared on this earthly planet. Here in your country, Bharat, just 500 years ago. Krishna Bharam Tusha Krishna Mushanga Pangusha Parshadam Yagnai Sankatam Prayar Shantihi Shu Medashaha. Generally, Krishna's, he's called the Tree Yuga Avatar. Tree, of course, in Sanskrit means three. So he appears in three yugas. There's no mention that Krishna appears directly in four yugas. There's no, there's no need <laughs> because everyone's so fallen, they won't be able to take advantage of his kripa, his mercy. Kalo suddha sambhavan. Varaha Purana says in the age of Kali, everyone is born sudra or less, less. Malecha, Yavana. So, it, you know, trying to spread a spiritual message in Kali Yuga is like trying to light a fire uh, on, on wet wood. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. But, whatever disqualifications we have, the Lord's mercy is more powerful than our disqualifications. 
That's the good story. <laughs> That's the happy ending. Everything in Krishna consciousness has a happy ending. So the happy ending is, irregardless of how fallen you are, this mantra works on you. And, and that's the reason that uh, after the Sankirtan movement broke out of the house of uh, uh, Srivash Thakur, Srivash Anga, Mahaprabhu was relishing nocturnal kirtans every evening, every night, midnight actually with his pure devotees, Amala Bhakti, who had only pure devotion. He was relishing. If you think about it, the Lord was relishing his chanting his own holy names. And if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for us. What could be better? <coughs> He's the supreme enjoyer. He's the reservoir of all pleasure. He's the connoisseur of Ras. You can't get better than that. And if he's inviting us into that same kirtan where we can get that bhav, that love for Radha and Krishna, why, why, what would we look for elsewhere? Who in his, like I heard Prabhupada say one time, who in his right mind would not chant Hare Krishna? <laughs> like Prabhupada couldn't believe it. Like the benefits are so great. Who wouldn't chant? All the sinful reactions in the heart are destroyed ultimately to nothing. The material desires which drag us life after life after life through the hot coals of material existence, they're uprooted. Lust, anger and greed, these, they're described as the three gates leading to hell. They're uprooted. You may have seen uh, a strong wind uproot a tree. I don't know if you have hurricanes here or tornadoes or whatever, but you may have seen, a, a, or at least you've seen on internet, <laughs> a, 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 a massive tree can be uprooted by a hurricane. To, you know, to a common villager, it's like, you know, they, they tie their cattle and their horses and you know, next to the tree for a long time and it takes all of that weight, the abuse, but a wind comes along, the tree's over, uprooted. So how much more difficult is it to uproot those desires, material desires, which has kept, have kept us bound to material existence, birth after birth after birth. Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagavan Ji, Guru Krishna Prashad, Bhai Bhakti Lad Bij. Our, our itinerary, <laughs> when you go on a trip, you make an itinerary. You're going to go here, then there, then there. So, what's been our itinerary since we fell from grace? Since we fell from, the, 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 from Vaikuntha, from the kingdom of God, what, is, what, what have we been doing? Everything's explained in Vedic scriptures. We've been wandering aimlessly looking for the fleeting pleasure of material life, which is like water off a duck's back or water off a lotus flower. Boom, boom, it's gone. And in that futile search, we've been traveling from Brahmanda to Brahmanda to Brahmanda. What's a Brahmanda? It's a universe. We've been traveling through different universes. How many universes are there? We hear how Mahavishnu, when he lies down in you know, the creation, then that, that there's unlimited universes coming from the pores of his skin. It's quite amazing. It make a good science fiction movie, but it's a reality. The pores, from his pores are coming unlimited universes. There's more universes in this material creation then there are grains of sand on this earth. You've been to a beach. How many grains of sand are there on a beach and another beach and another beach? And you go to America, you go to Australia, New Zealand, uh, South America, there's beaches, beaches, there's, there's more universes. And what have we been doing? We've been going from one universe to the next. Oh, maybe it'll be better next time. 
Or maybe it'll be better in the next universe. Curiosity killed the cat. That's the story of our lives. Not only that, but we've been going from species of life to species of life to species of life to species of life. It makes you shudder. And from body to body to body. That's our sad story. Our sad story. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, considering the fallen nature of the people of Kali Yuga, we're kind of the leftovers <laughs> from the previous age, ages. There was Satya, Treta, Dupora, then Kali. So Satya, Satya Yuga, you know, you've read Prabhupada's books. It's the golden age. Why? Because most of the population is serious. A.K.A. Kurunandana, I'm going home. They're serious about their practices. Takes a hundred thousand years. Om. And not in a nice air-conditioned hall like this, but <laughs> up in the glaciers near Badrinath. <laughs> and those who didn't make it in Satya Yuga, they were born in Treta Yuga. 75,000 years, ritualistic activities. Svaha, ah, svaha, svaha, you. Right? And then came, the, many, 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 many went back. Krishna says to Arjuna in the Gita, as in the past so many persons have achieved perfection, so Arjuna, you should follow in their footsteps. It's an interesting verse. So a lot went back in Satya. More went back in Treta, and then came to Pura Yuga. The Pura Yuga. And in the Pura Yuga, the process is you go to the uh, temple and you pay your respects to the Lord. Archivigraha. Prabhupada said one time, Archivigraha is the most merciful incarnation, just in that particular lecture. <coughs> I was wondering why. Why is Prabhupada saying that the deity standing in the temple is the most merciful incarnation? <clears throat> and Prabhupada explained. He said because Krishna in his uh, original form, Shwayam Bhagavan, he comes and he goes. Varaha came and he went. Matsya came and he went. Even Lord Narasim Bhagavan, he came just to save one devotee, one incarnation for one devotee, and the pastime, you know, it was a big fight, bam, bam, boom. It lasted, well, I don't know, 45 minutes, and he left. One incarnation for one devotee. How kind is God? People say, how can there be God? There's so much suffering. Well, become a devotee. You won't experience suffering. You'll experience the joy of being delivered by God. Like someone said, there's no light. Well, turn around. Look at this bright light in my face. <laughs> there's God. So he comes, and he comes, and he comes, and he comes. He comes once in a day of Brahma. And according to scholars, we take time. We calculate time, not by the time of puny humans, what are we compared to the devatas? Like what's an ant compared to us? A little ant. They have their time. They get up, they have breakfast, they go to work. <laughs> they come home, they go to sleep. They have a time, but it's insignificant. So our time is insignificant compared to the devatas, elevated, exalted personalities. So it said once in a day of Brahma, don't think, oh, that's a long time. That's like a moment in cosmic time. Poof! Krishna comes every day, and he knocks on the door. Hey, human beings, sarva dharmam paricaja mame kam sananam brajar ham tam sarva papibya moksis ba suja. He's not talking to pure devotees. He's talking to fallen people. Give up all these temporary dharmas. Just surrender unto me. I'll protect you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Is he speaking to pure devotees? Even madhyams? Even, even uh, 
New bhaktas? No, he's, th those who haven't yet surrendered. If you surrender to me, I'll protect you from your karma. That means he's talking to, to non-devotees. Hey, you out there, you've forgotten me. Bhanir Mukha, you've turned your face on me. You deny my existence. Stop. Look around. What's this world? Dukalaya Mashashvatam. A temporary place full of so many millions. I'm offering you an alternative, a positive alternative, a panacea. It's a strong word in English. It means a, a solution to everything. Just so come home. Surrender to me. I'll protect you from all sinful reactions. He's so kind, Krishna, every day. <laughs> open the door. No, I don't want to open the door. <laughs> open the door. No, I'm not interested in religion. I'm an atheist. Okay. Stick around for a few more million births. So he comes every day. And he goes. And he comes and he goes and he comes and he goes. The avatars of Bhagavan, avatari, they're as numerous as the waves of the ocean. We know the Das avatars, we know the principal ten incarnations. But there's as many incarnations as there are waves on the ocean. And that means the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Southern Ocean. And how many waves are breaking on the beach? You know, I don't even know if AI can figure it out yet. <laughs> Not so many incarnations there. Not just Krishna, Kaparitunaya, Sadhanam, Bhinashayat, Duskudam, Dharmasam. Okay, we know that. But it's not just Krishna. There are so many incarnations coming, coming, coming. And we turn a deaf ear. Good Lord. We turn a deaf ear. It's an English phrase. We turn a deaf ear. No. We're so unfortunate. But sometimes he doesn't go. Sometimes he stays. If, if you've been to Mayapur, how many of you have been to Mayapur? Navadweep and in our Mayapur, not far from our Mayapur Chandadaya Mandir, there's Nishringapali. Nishringapali is a lake. After killing Hiranyakashipu, on his way back to Vaikuntha, um, the Lord stopped, Nishringadev stopped in Nishringapali. Because the demigods had built a lake for him so he could wash his hands with the blood of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> the demigods made a lake. Come here, wash the blood off your hands before you go back to Vaikuntha. Get that that demon's blood off of you before you go to the pure, pristine atmosphere of Vaikuntha. <laughs> so he came. He just spent a moment there, washed his hands of the blood. And then he departed. But before he left, Shwambu, Shwambu. Nishinga, he self-manifested as a deity. He self-manifested as a deity, uh, killing Hiranyakashipu. That deity is still there. This was Satya Yuga. He didn't come and go, come and go, come. Of course, he did go back because the devotees were feeling so much separation from him, they could barely survive. So Lord, love is reciprocal. He went home, but he stayed in the form of the deity. So therefore, Prabhupada said, the deity is the most merciful incarnation of the Lord. And he's there for us. He's there to receive our, our love and our, our, and our devotion. So Krishna comes, he goes, he stays. But in this age, it's a very interesting phenomena. He comes not in the form of a fish, or a boar, or a dwarf. Um, he, he comes in a very interesting form, in a, in a so-called material form. The deities, they're not material, but the, the marble's there, the wood's there, the stone's there, but by the presence of the Lord, it becomes transformed into something spiritual. But to our naked eye, it looks material, but we know it's fully spiritual. 
the deity is fully conscious, supremely conscious, because he's God. <laughs> the deity is God. So it's very interesting. Krishna comes in a, a very subtle form in Kali Yuga. True Yuga Avatar. God doesn't come, you know, like, like you know, like Govinda, money, you know, or Vamana, or you know. He comes in a very interesting form. Sound. Like metal, like stone, like marble, it's a material element. Sound is a material element. And Krishna comes in this form in this age. Kali Kali Nam Rup Krishna Avatar. He descends, the incarnation for this age is the sound vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. He doesn't come as God, you know, Turibanga Sundara, with his Vamsi and his Keshav, long hair, and his, his garland, Vajanti garland, five different flowers, down to his ankles. He doesn't come in this age. He's true Yuga Avatar. He doesn't come personally, because if he came personally, People would want to imitate him and become God. That's why he doesn't come as God. People are so fallen. They'll see how beautiful he is and they'll think, I want to be him. My body philosophy is very prominent in this age, that you are God. So he, he and understanding how my body philosophy is so prominent in Kali Yuga, I'm not gonna go directly, I'll come indirectly. In a few ways, I'll come, in the, in the form of my name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. He, he comes as a devotee. Mahaprabhu appeared as a, a devotee. It took some time for, his, for the residents of Navadvip to figure out that Nimai Pandit was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then the Sangatam movement started, but he appeared in the role of a devotee because, oh, he's so blissful, Goranga. He's always chanting, he's always dancing. He's very sweet, he's very blissful. I'll follow him. And by following him, you revive your dormant Krishna consciousness. So this was the Lord's plan. So sound is so important. It said that by sound, we become conditioned, and by sound, we become liberated just by sound. And I heard Prabhupada say that although Kali Yuga, everything is diminishing day by day by day in Kali Yuga, there's two things that never lose their potency. I said, what? I, I read in the, in the Bhagavatam, in the 12th canto, day by day by day, everything becomes deteriorated and all good qualities become nil. Everything's destroyed, all dharma is destroyed, cleanliness, truthfulness, mercy, austerity, it's all obliterated by the evil nature of this age. Everything good is gone. But then I heard Prabhupada say there's two things that are, are, are never affected by Kali Yuga. And I was all ears, we say in English. You know, if you, the teacher is saying something interesting, you're all ears. What? When's vacation? Tomorrow? <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> so I was all ears. What is Prabhupada saying? That there's two things that never deteriorate. I mean, my God, everything in this creation is going to be dust in due course of time. And all good qualities in Kali Yuga. Prabhupada told my God brother, Vishnu Jan Maharaj, that the, at the end of Kali Yuga, there'll be no oil because people will have you know, there's a certain amount of oil in the earth that can be shared by humanity over the ages for natural reasons, but people, due to greed, they'll exploit the oil uh, in, in, on the earth and they won't be able to run their tractors anymore to make food. So Vishnu John said, well, what will people eat? Prabhupada said, well, at the end of Kali Yuga, they'll eat each other. 
So it's a bad age. So what, what, is, what cannot be polluted by this age? Prabhupada said jewels. Any of you are jewelers? You know, you set the sapphire, the pearl, the ruby, in, in, and people wear them in rings to ward off the planetary influence. A good stone, not a stone that's blemish or whatever, a good stone in Kali Yuga never loses its potency. I was shocked. Out of everything, a ruby? <laughs> it's like they say if there's an atomic war, the only living entities who, who will survive are cockroaches. The biologists say that. Somehow or other, by Mother Nature's arrangement, a cockroach can survive a nuclear fallout. What? <laughs> They'll only be caught. <laughs> Albert Einstein said, World War IV uh, will be fought with sticks and stones because World War III will ab obliterate everything. It's only cockroaches. But here's something deeper, and I'm going to go even deeper now. Jewels are not affected by Kali. Kali Yuga. And you know what else is not affected by Kali Yuga? Mantras. Mantras remain always pure. Because mantras, where do they come from? What does this Maha Mantra come from? Golok Prem Dan Hurinam Sen Kirtan Ki. Srila Naratam Dashtakur, the great saint. He tells us where does mantra come from? It's not a folk song somebody's made up in Bengal. It's not a happy tune that, you know, is here today and gone tomorrow. What is the source of this mantra? It comes from Goloka. That means a lot. That says something. Like when you first meet somebody, you, maybe you're a businessman, you travel around the world and, you know, you meet people at some conference somewhere. What's the first thing you ask that person when, you know, you're sitting here? Uh, yeah, well, you came to the corporate. Where are you from? Isn't it? You meet somebody, even here in India, you'll say, are you, are you from Karnataka? Are you from UP, Bengal? Where, where, where are you from? Because by hearing where they're from, we get an idea what they're like. No prejudice here, just, you know, trying to figure out who I'm sitting next to on the bus or you know, who, you know, I meet somebody. Where are you from? What's your name? Where are you from? Isn't it? Because oh, je suis français. Je vivi la France. He says, I'm from France. You get an idea. Uh, he's from German, Germany. Das gut, mein Herr. He's from Italy. He's from China. Ni hao. You know, you meet, and then you get a little idea just because of history and culture and internet. You get to know, oh, wow, that's cool. I've always wanted to go to, you know, Germany or, tell me. <clears throat> so the origin of something says a lot <clears throat> about what that is. So, Golok Prem Dan Harinam Sankirtan, this chanting of Hare Krishna, it comes from the topmost planet in the spiritual world. Oh my God, OMG. <laughs> it comes from the, that says a lot. You don't have to speculate. Speculation, you know, it's one of the four regular principles. Don't speculate. No mental speculation. <laughs> no gambling. <laughs> wow, it comes from there must be something special. Yeah, it is pretty special. It comes from the spiritual world. People are so interested in going into outer space and discovering something. Right? We're spending billions of dollars in the last century going to what, what's in outer space. I can tell you right now. Abhrama Bhuvana Loka Punar Arvito Arjuna Mamo Petate Kontiya Punar Janmana Vidyate. Krishna is the creator of this world. If you start a business, you know the business better than anybody. <laughs> so Krishna created it, he maintains it, he'll annihilate it. He knows this material world, and what does he say? From the topmost planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places in misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. 
Prabhu's, that includes Bangalore. <laughs> You've got some nice subway or metro and nice buildings that are coming up. But don't be in any illusion. It's part of that verse. <laughs> Not the name, but in fame. <laughs> That's the material world. So what are you going to find? You'll see, it's the same, you'll see the same thing everywhere you go. Birth, disease, old age and death. From the topmost planet down to the lowest, all are places of misery. So if you want to do some you know, space exploration, if you really want to find something nice, go beyond the Viraja River. What's the Viraja River? The Vira Viraja River is the river that divides the material world with the spiritual world. You have to cross, just like in my country, to get <coughs> from Mexico, where people are poor and they want to come to America, to, be, to immigrate. It's not easy, but if you can swim across the Rio Grande River, hey, you, you know, and the, the border patrol doesn't catch you, everything's free in America. Everything's free in America. Everything's free in America. It's one song that <clears throat> from a famous play called West Side Story. <laughs> People have this conception: America is, you know, it's a beautiful. You know, it's also part of the material world. <clears throat> but to get there, you have to cross over the river. That's dangerous. So to get from the material world. To the spirit, you have to cross the Viraja River, this Viraja River. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. <clears throat> but through the process of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, everything's possible. In the old <clears throat> booklet, which we used to distribute in 1970 in America. It was one of the first books we had for book distribution. It was called Easy Journey to Other Planets. Because in those days, you know, the Sputnik was just starting in Russia and America, they had their, you know, it was this race to the moon type of thing, you know? <clears throat> Hadn't happened yet. Or maybe it had happened. Yes, it had happened already. But there was this, you know, interest in, in interplanetary exploration. So Prabhupada was, you know, so intelligent, he, he wrote a book. Okay, you want to go to the moon? You're fascinated by Mars? Maybe you want to go to the sun? <clears throat> one, one time Prabhupada told us, <clears throat> he said the yogis, they know how to go to the sun. I was like, really? <laughs> like, how do they do it? And I didn't think Prabhupada would say, but he said the technique, he said they know how to go to the, to the sun. He said, you want to know how? Yeah. He said, they enter into a ray of sunshine by their cities. They enter into a, <clears throat> a ray of sunshine. Mm. They go to the sun, they satisfy their curiosity, they come back through the ray of sunshine. And then Prabhupada paused, because sometimes, you know, things would come out that it was just like these special moments, when these golden moments with Prabhupada, something would come out like really special. He said, yes, it's true, I tried it and it worked. I'm just saying, the pure devotee, <clears throat> as we know, has all eight mystic powers. <clears throat> But he doesn't demonstrate them because he's showing us something higher, bhakti or devotion. Mystic powers are like child's play with the universe, you know, play around your mystic city. So, and doesn't want us to follow him for his mystic powers like Sly Bubba. I said Sly, not Sai. Anyway, because he wants us to follow him for his teachings about bhakti according to Bhagavad Gita. So, we used to distribute this book, Easy Journey to Other Planets. Prabhupada wrote it because people were interested. You want to go to other planets? Here, read this book. Here's how to go to higher planets. 
And here's how to go to the highest planet. What's the highest planet? Golok. And what is the definition of Golok? Jiva Goswami says in his Tatsandarbha, Go means cows. Loka means planet. So Goloka means a planet of cows. I was speaking with one Christian priest. He said, so, you know, we, we call the, the, the goal heaven. What, what do you call it? I said, we call it Goloka. He said, oh, what does that mean? What, for you, what is heaven? <laughs> so I said, Goloka means a planet of cows. And he went, what? <laughs> That's heaven? A planet of cows? I said, it's a long story, I'll tell you later. <laughs> That's the Param Gatim. So in this painting, which was on the cover of the book, the little, you've seen, maybe the, maybe, I don't know if you've seen the originals, uh, Easy Journey to Other Planets. I think now they have a yogi or something meditating. But it was this devotee, the brahmachari, in a saffron dhoti with a saffron uh, sash, the shaved head in a sika, the painting had him, you know, flying through the dark universe with some planets shining like that, with his mala. He had his bead bag, and the beads are hanging out. He, he's, you could see he's chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. <laughs> I, I was so impressed with that as a new bhakta. Man, I can fly. I can fly to the sky. I can fly to the moon, I can go to Mars, you know, new bhakta. I just have to take my beads and keep chanting. And <laughs> so, it's not exactly like that, but it is that. It is that. That is the process for going back home, back to Godhead, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And along with the philosophy, we have the example. There's, Prabhupada said there's the Bhagavat and there's the person Bhagavat. There's the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the philosophy, and then there's the Acharya, the spiritual master, who shows you how to live the philosophy. Both are required. You have Gita, you have Bhagavatam, but you need someone to write a purport to the 18,000 slokas, to the Bhagavad, 700 verses of the Bhagavad Gita, and to show you how it works, how it works. The teacher, he's teaching Bhagavad Gita, but doesn't mean he's learning Bhagavad Gita. Like a teacher takes a pen, or that, that, that crayon that they write on the, on, the, on the wall, right? Teaching the students, A, B, C. Does that mean the teacher's learning the alphabet? No, he's teaching the students the alphabet. So when God comes and chants his own holy name, it's for the purpose of demonstrating how to become liberated. Moksha, beyond moksha, how to go back home, back to Godhead. The same with Prabhupada. Prabhupada didn't have to chant 16 rounds a day. He's fully Krishna conscious, but he did every day to show us how important it is to follow the, uh, follow the example. It works. There has to be proof, we say in English, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Oh, I have this nice, okay, let's say Shrikant. I have some Shrikant, Prabhu, it's the best. I have come from Gujarat, and the Shrikant, it's very nice there. You but you, you're not going to believe me until you, oh, wow, that was the best Shrikant I ever had. Oh, I had the little spices, and cardamom, and saffron, and mmm. So we need examples, how the mantra works, to give us shraddha, faith. Prabhupada gave me an instruction when I was 19. He said, Indra Jumna, preach boldly and have faith in the holy names. We need faith in the holy names in order to chant from our heart with, with all focus and all earnestness, with prayer. It's almost like the mantra is a prayer more than a mantra. My dear Lord, my dear energy, the Lord, Radharani, please pick me up from this ocean of death and take me back to the spiritual world. So to get to that point, we have to see how the mantra is working. When I was in school, we had this, I remember fourth grade, we, 
you know, to get over our shyness and to learn how to speak publicly. In fourth grade, they were training us like this in my school. We had to bring something from home and then get in front of the class and show it and then tell them about it. So the, the teacher's mantra was, uh, don't tell me, show me. Meaning, don't just talk about it, but show me how it works. Uh, you know, I, I bought a tractor, a little toy tractor. <laughs> it was a really nice tractor. She said, okay, don't just tell me, show me how it works. And then the kids will be impressed. Don't tell me, show me. So here we are, this mantra, this is, the, this is the panacea for all problems in the material world. Okay, like, can you prove it? Can you prove it? Can you prove it, all of you? Can you prove that this mantra is the panacea for all problems? Can you prove it that this mantra changes your life? Can you prove, are you are exa an example? Yes. Does it work? Look in the mirror and chant, what will happen? Ooh, no. You chant in front of the mirror. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Did you see anyone like, oh, I hate chanting? No, chanting always works. It, ri it rises you above the three modes, Shuddha the three modes of material nature. So therefore we see in the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he didn't just say, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevalam, you'll become liberated. He demonstrated it. He went to the Jari Kunda forest. They're not even humans. They're not even subhumans. They're not even Yavanas and Malachas. They're animals. Chirp, 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 chirp. On a moya. They're only interested in one thing eating, 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 eating. That's all animals think about. Eating, sleeping, mating, and fighting. And we do the same thing, but in a polished way. So we're like polished animals. Human life begins when you begin to question who you are, who is God, and what is your relationship with Him. That's your birthday. You may be 50 years old, but if you started, you came to the temple last week, you started inquiring, you took some japa beads, according to the shasas, you're seven days old. Human life begins when we start our spiritual questioning. An animal can't even think like that. It's all day long, food, 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 mate, mate, fight, fight. So there's no question of an animal being delivered. But there's two instances that prove that this mantra goes deep into the heart of even the dumbest animal and can awaken prema. Because Mahaprabhu asked Takuharidas, the Namacharya, the lead chanter of, of the holy names. It was a kind of interesting conversation. It's like the, you know, the master's asking the student to clarify something. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu says, Haridas, this chanting of Hare Krishna can deliver humanity. But then he said, but Haridas, what about all the immovable living entities? How will they be delivered? What? God is so kind, he wants to deliver like trees and plants and bushes and flower bushes? What? Usually he just comes and delivers the Brahmanas and the Khatriyas in, in such a Treta and Dipura. Now he's talking about immovable living entities? Haridas just smiled. He said, yes, Lord, they can also be delivered. They can't even think about anything but eating, but they can also be delivered by, delivered by how? By the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. So we accept that as absolute truth. Whatever a pure devotee says is as good as Shastra. Guru Shastra Sadhu. Whatever a pure devotee says, we take it. It may not be there in the scripture, but it's as good as scripture. Because he sees it all, Tattva Darshi. 
He can see it all, what's happening materially and spiritually. So Haridas said, it. if you chant very loudly, then even a bug can be delivered. I told the story last week. We were on traveling Sangaton in France, and we were having lunch in a field, me and the brahmacharis. You know, we're taking all, boing, boing. This uh, big grasshopper landed on my knee, a grasshopper. You know grasshoppers? Like that. Like a praying mantis, but a grasshopper. And he just sat there watching me eat. It was kind of weird. Like, go, go away. He didn't go away. He, he's going like this, looking at me, eating my samosa. So one boy brought up this whole pastime of Hari, of course, I'm not Hari, Hari Dashtakur, but he's saying the loud chanting, he's not just talking about himself, can deliver someone who's in total ignorance. So the boy said, remember, uh, Maharaj, you were ta- telling the story of Mahaprabhu inquiring from Hari Dashtakur, how the fallen plants and animals can be delivered. Hari Dashtakur said, by the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. So he said, why didn't you deliver that grasshopper? So I said, wow, never thought of it like that. So I put down my samosa and, you know, sometimes like butterflies, that if you're very careful like this, and then they'll, they'll sit on your finger. Do you ever have that experience? Or like a grasshopper, you know. In, in America where I live, we had, I lived in the forest, so we had lots of these bugs and sometimes you just go like that and they sit on your finger. So I took the grasshopper and I went, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And all the Brahmacharis started cracking up. He said, you gave that mantra in great interest to deliver that grasshopper and because you did that in the mode of great compassion to deliver him from the repetition of birth and death, you're his guru. (laughs) You just initiated a grasshopper. Hmm. So I went, okay, so your name is Garuda Das. Now go away. <laughs> and every year the Brahmacharis would come out, how's your, how's your disciple doing, Garuda? <laughs> as, as yet, I've never given that name. To, you know, I have several thousand disciples. I never gave that name to anybody because I'm afraid that Garuda will become angry. <laughs> so it's kind of humorous, but there's some, there's some truth in that. Because Haridas, he's a Namacharya. Who knows better than him? That's how, so if, if, if a plant, if, if a flowering bush, if a tree, according to Haridas Thakur, can be delivered by hearing the Maha Mantra, what about us, Prabhus? We have a golden opportunity. You're born in Bharat. It's said in Chaitanya Charitamrita that only the most pious people in the universe are born in Bharat. Of course, there's impious people here too, but I've seen that you're, you're pious people. So you're born in this country, and even it's, though it's Kali Yuga, and Western civilization has filtered in to this pristine, pure Vedic culture. Cry, my beloved country, but that's just the way it is. But still, you know, when, when your Prime Minister Narendra Modi builds the beautiful new Ram temple where Ram appeared in Ayodhya, the whole country, well, not the whole country, but much of the country is elated. I've been traveling around India <clears throat> and I'm on a train or I'm on a plane or I'm walking down the street. Nobody knows me. I go, J.C. Ram! <laughs> Everyone looks at me and says, whoa, yo, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> they come and thank me. Thank you, are a Westerner, you know. Yahweh, yeah, yeah. Jai Sri Ram, Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram, Patita Pavana. You know the mantra, yeah. <laughs> Jai Sri Ram, Death to Ravana. <laughs> <clears throat> so you know these things. There's so many temples, there's Shiva temples. And Garuda's there in front of every temple. There's deities, Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram Lakshma, Radha Krishna, even Durga Ma, she's expansion of yoga maya from the spiritual world. Everywhere. You have to try not to be Krishna conscious in this country. Because there's so many ways to remember Krishna. So you, you have a golden opportunity. You have to make it home. There's no excuse 
for you not going back to Godhead in this one lifetime. There's no excuse. It, it takes some discipline. The, the word disciple comes from the word discipline. You have to do some discipline, but, you know, austerity is the wealth of the brahmanas. We get a little detached from everything, from our own suffering, and we feel the joy of chanting Hare Krishna and taking prasadam and serving the devotees and serving the deities. You have this golden opportunity. And if, if trees and bushes, what about the animals in, in the Jari Kunda forest? That's not a fairy tale. That's not mythology. That's not a made up story. One time my god sister, one of my god sisters said to Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, like, is it really true that God's a little boy? Or he never ages beyond 16? And, and he has long, dark, curly hair, lips red like bimba fruit, a, a nose like a sesame seed, he's turibanga, he, he wrestles with his friends in the sands of Raman Radi and in the moonlight, uh, the full moonlight in the month of autumn. <coughs> he dances with his gopis. Is it really true, Prabhupada, that he's blue? So Prabhupada just he kind of closed his eyes and then he said, my dear disciple, do you think I would cheat you? And she froze, because she had so much faith in Prabhupada, so much love for Prabhupada. Do you think I would cheat you? And she don't know Prabhupada. Krishna's blue. <coughs> he wrestles with his friends. He dances with the gopis. Thank you so much. <coughs> so when we hear that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, on his way to Vrindavan, he went to uh, Bihar, and there's the Jharkhand forest there. It's like jungle, actually. <coughs> and you know the past time, Balabhadra Bhattacharya was with him. He was his servant. And then as they came into the jungle, jungle means wild animals. And there was tigers. And the tigers were looking, mm, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> this will be real prashadam, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> and then Mahaprabhu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And the tigers, they had a change of heart. Their, their heart changed, just like we want to have a change of heart by taking up spiritual path. If you go to a mosque, a church, a synagogue, <coughs> a temple, you go to the house of God, <clears throat> you're supposed to come out a changed person, not the same person. Like you go to a hospital, you're sick, you want to come out a different person. So by chanting this mantra, there was no temple, no synagogue, no mosque, no church, just the holy name of Krishna. And, and, and the tigers had a, a change of heart. They stood up, and, and in our vocabulary, in our language, they started singing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare Rama. And so did the deer. And there's a natural animosity between the deer and the tigers. But the deers and the tigers started dancing together. And, and, and they started kissing, actually. It was a very romantic pastime, real rasic pastime. <laughs> to be careful about rasik, right? We, we're on our way there, so. But here we, here we have some ras, very rasik love story. They're kissing. And, 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 and then the snakes came, and they started dancing with the mongoose, their natural enemy. And the birds came, and, and, the, and all the animals came, and they started chanting in a tumultuous roar. Then they broke down in tears of love of God. Oh, Govinda, feeling your separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. Oh, Krishna, I'm feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. How to get to that point? Oh, my gosh. Because they heard from Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada says elsewhere that the chanting of Hare Krishna is always beneficial. Always, however you hear it, if you're in the department store, Someone's playing the, 
But they said, it's especially beneficial if you hear it from the lips of a pure devotee. Therefore, we should listen to Prabhupada Bhajans. Nowadays, there's so many popular kirtaniers, and we thank the Lord for them. But who chants better than Prabhupada? So in our homes, Bandeham, Si Guru, Si Uta, Padakamalam, Si Guru, Vaishnavam, Sya. Prabhupada chanting. That, that we should hear from his lips. Even though it's recorded, it doesn't lose its power in Kali Yuga. Jewels and the holy name don't lose their power. They don't become diminished. You hear Prabhupada chanting now, it's as good as when he was here presently in front of you. It's so powerful. So they heard from the, the lips of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bala Bhattacharya is like, what is going on here? And you know what? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Just, I just, you know, to become 100% convinced, I went to Bihar and I went with my group into the Jari Kunda jungle. It's not easy. And we went to the place. There's an actual place where that kirtan took, took place. And because the kirtan was what it was, a, a lila, a goranga lila, a pastime of the Lord, because it was such a transcendentally powerful event, the ground, the rock, melted in ecstasy, having Chitan, hearing Mahaprabhu's kirtan. What is that? It melted in ecstasy. Therefore, you go there, you can see the footprints of Mahaprabhu. You can see the footprints of Bala Bhattacharya. He's a little back. <laughs> you can see the footprints of the elephants. Big holes like that. And the deer, the deer's footprints right next to them. And you can see the snakes going like this. And, but their heads are a little bit up, so their head, you just see them, but the heads are up chanting. But you see very clearly, any, anyone, it's very clearly, the snakes were going in this liquid nectar, liquid melted love of God. And the little chipmunks and the mongooses and even the little butterflies, everyone's footprint is there. And it extends, it goes on and on for kilometers and miles, it goes on and on. It didn't just happen in one place. We saw it with our own eyes. We went there and we grabbed the rock which has the footprints of Mahaprabhu and we clamped it to our head like that. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adhaita Gadadhar Shri go. When I pulled it back there was a little piece of rock in my head. His footprint. So I put it in here. <laughs> the feet of the actual footprint of Mahaprabhu. There's so many things in here. You wouldn't believe what's in here. It's one of the things that's in here. And then we follow. We follow the the footprints, you know, elephants walking, deer dancing, snakes slithering. In our mind, we could just envision this, like, that, that was the mother of all kirtans. <laughs> and then we got a little bit further, and the park ranger said, you can't go any further. I said, why? He said, because there's tigers, and you're not Mahaprabhu, so we're going back. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So this happened, you know, we said in cosmic time, Mahaprabhu comes every day, or Krishna comes every day. So, you know, every day, but just 500 years ago? It's like you just missed him, you know? It's like, who was that? That was Mahaprabhu, you just missed him. Oh. But he left behind the most valuable treasure. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nama, Hare. But you have to be determined. Because Maya's thankless task is to keep the conditioned souls in this world as, as long as they're not sincere devotees. Because just like the kirtans of Sriva Sangam, only, very, only pure devotees could come. Even if one had the slightest material desire, it would infringe on the purity of the kirtan. So Mahaprabhu wouldn't let anyone who wasn't a pure devotee. So if you have the smallest material desire, you can't go back to the kingdom of God, you can't go back to Goloka, because that selfish interest will pollute the atmosphere. 
So Maya Devi, her job is to test you. Do you really want to go back to Godhead? You know, you're dancing in the kirtan, you're offering your prasadam, you're chanting around, but in your heart of hearts, is that actually your goal? Because it takes time to become fully sri, atma divedanam. It takes time. So she sometimes produces little <coughs> attractions for us, you know? <coughs> the neophyte devotee. Something, you know, will come to your mind and you'll stop chanting, hmm, she was a pretty girl, or he was a handsome boy, or I saw that unoffered cake in the bakery and I started salivating. <laughs> or what if I became a core party, everybody would worship me. You know, sometimes this old residue comes up in the mind. She's testing you. You just have to say, nope, not interested. Like bubbles come up sometimes from the bottom of the lake. By nature's way, little bubbles come up from the mud. You can see them if you're in the boat. So sometimes desires come up because of our past lives or we retain some attachments, so they'll come. So the best way to get rid of a guest who you don't want in your home <laughs> is to ignore them <laughs> or don't feed them. You know, if, if someone, relative comes, I, okay, not, not a relative, but somebody comes to your house and, you know, they were recommended or they were told they could stay there and you don't like them, you think, when are we going to get rid of this guy? Well, when it's time for breakfast, just say, uh, we, we don't have breakfast in this family. <laughs> what? Okay, I'll wait for lunch. We don't eat lunch in this room. <laughs> what? Okay, dinner. No dinner either. No, you're not. No, we fast. We eat once a month. <laughs> well, I'm going home. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> you're going home. <laughs> so if some desire comes to your mind, don't entertain it. Make it fast. Ignore it, it'll go away. That's one trick. Another trick to get free from material desires is to get a higher taste. I'd like to do that, but I'd rather chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare. So it's, it's, it's you know, the simple, most easiest sublime process, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap. You have to vacha vegam, manasakrota vegam, jiva vegam, upashta vegam. You have to rein in the restless senses like the turtle. If there's danger, she pulls in all her extremities. She's just under the shell. So you have to become disciplined. You have to have a routine that you follow in the morning and in the evening. And you have to be conscious to offer your food. And when you're eating the food, you're not just eating because it tastes good and you're hungry. Oh, that's a good... You're respecting Krishna's mercy. Prabhupada was always a little slow when he, I watched him on several occasions. He, he was taking the prasadam and he looked at Eden and he would, I saw as Eden was savoring the taste, but because it was tasted by Krishna. He didn't plow through a meal. And then, oh, I'm so full. No, he never, he, he would eat consciously like they never said I'm full. He ate enough to satisfy the Atman, the soul. Of course, this is, takes time. It's not something you can do immediately. It takes time to, you know, that, that's why it's a gradual process. We're works in progress. We're works in progress. And we shouldn't become disillusioned. Oh, I've been around so long. You know, I, I am not so advanced. No. If you're one inch above the ocean, you're safe. If you're drowning in the ocean, someone picks you up one, one inch, you're safe. You may not be on the land, but you're safe. So if you're in this movement, and you're making a good, sincere effort, you're trying your best, sometimes you slip up, sometimes you make a mistake, okay, it can be forgiven. If you show some remorse and you change your ways, don't, don't become depressed, don't leave. Stay and, and, and keep chanting, because by keep chanting, that taste is gonna come. And one day, you're not gonna be able to put down your beads. Why do you think that there's sadhus in Vrindavan who chant 192 rounds a day? I have seen them. At Surya Kund, there's one Baba. I went to see him. I stayed with him some years ago. I didn't stay with him, but I stayed the day. Little hut, all day long. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. He was chanting that fast. Hare Krishna, that's slow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Rama. He was like, he was like he was eating a gulab or something. He was just like relishing <laughs> 18 hours a day. So you'll get to that point. Because Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure and he's non-different than his holy name. Namat Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. You have to have faith. And that's why congregational chanting is so important because in every congregation there's advanced devotees. There's intermediate devotees. There's new devotees. So you'll always be surrounded by devotees who are sincere and maybe they're not, they're not having a bad day like you. They're having a good day. <laughs> that day they really focus on the chanting. So you stick to the association of devotees and you'll be safe. It's a safeguard to be with devotees. And by constantly chanting, even Nambas, even not consciously, Cheto Darpana Marjanam, you're being purified every time. Therefore, Prabhupada said, Kirtaniyad Sadahari, or it's in the CC, Kirtaniyad Sadahari. If you've got time, chant Hare Krishna. Because life is short and then you die. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. It's not only old people who die. Babies die in the womb. Teenagers die in accident. People get cancer at 35. We don't know how long we have. Our real business in this world. We have our business. It's important. Body is important. Family is important. Society is important. The world's important to a certain degree because... We're here and we want to use it as a foundation for going back to Godhead. What's utmost important? Becoming fully Krishna conscious. And we're busy, busy bodies, busy as bees. We don't have so, we, we can't give time like 192 rounds a day. But if you've got time, chant Hare Krishna. Don't watch the cricket match. <laughs> don't talk gibberish, boom, 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 and this and that. And, you know, if you've got time, it, you learn as you get older, you realize you're in the twilight of your years. You know, the Amarash could come at any minute. So you, well, the beauty of old age is you become more serious. Because you know the hourglass is, 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 is you know, it, it's going down the, the, the sand and you can see it. So the beauty, every age has some beauty. Babies are cute. Toddlers are fun. You know, when you're young, you're healthy, you're strong, your senses, you know, you're Middle age, you know, you can be proud of your career. What's the beauty of old age? Your senses don't work anymore. You, even if you wanted to enjoy, you can't. So old age is like a blessing. If you're getting older, don't lament. It's a blessing in disguise. The body is falling apart, like a car. And as your car really starts to fall apart, you think, I want a new car, this is terrible. So you don't look, you don't, you're not so long attached to your body anymore. You're waiting for your next body to serve Guru Garanga. Or you're waiting to go home, go home and get your spiritual body. But one of the blessings of old age is that, that you realize, you know, <coughs> time, time is not on your side anymore. So every moment's like gold. And the kind of bad habits you may have had in middle age and youth, they just slip away with the realization I'd better become serious about chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. But if you can get that realization when you're sweet 16, God bless you. If you can have some realization, the temporary nature of this world, you know, Prabhupada said, faith means to put your trust in something sublime. So don't put your trust in material life. Go through material life, get a good education, get a career, have a family, grow old, have your grandchildren. But the goal of life is much higher than that because the animals are also doing that. They're also attached to their young when they pass away, they cry. I've seen the deer, a baby deer die, and the mother cried for weeks in the forest. So tolerate the inconsistencies of this world. Go through life responsible, but know that your ultimate responsibility is to go home. And I always give, how many times have my disciples heard the example of the sailor on the ocean? The sailor, you know, 18th century, he's sailing on the sea and his, you know, the, the big boats with the sails, and he's famous as a good sailor. He's a good sailor because he knows how to fix 
the sail when it gets ripped by the wind. He knows how to fix the mast when it breaks. He knows how to polish the brass. He knows how to scrub the deck and varnish the wood. He's, he's a good sailor on the sea. But that sailor never thinks for a minute that he's a creature of the ocean. He's good at what he does. He's responsible in his dharma, his work. But he's never thinking for a moment he's a creature of the ocean. He's a little nervous because a big storm may come, a big monster wave may come, and he's finished. So although he's, going, he's responsibly doing his work, the back of his mind, what's he thinking of? The land. The land. It's like he's always thinking of the land, scrubbing the deck, land, doing this land. Because <laughs> then he knows he's safe. That's his home. So there's that you know, classical story that you know, the clouds clear and he sees the island. Land ho! So we should be like the sailor. We should be responsible in all our different duties, taking care of this body, taking care of my wife and my children, working, taking a break on the weekend, going to the temple, uh, you know, paying my taxes, you know, Jai Hind, and, and be considered about the environment. We want to clean it up. We don't want to leave it bad for our children. That's not what life's, that's not the ultimate goal of life. We're strangers in a strange land. We're Atmas in transit. We don't belong here. We belong back in the spiritual world. So in the back of our mind, while we're going to think, Goloka Vrindavan ki jai ho, Goloka Vrindavan ki jai ho, Goloka Vrindavan ki jai ho. That's how we're thinking. We wake up in the morning, the first thing we don't think is about a cup of tea or, you know, uh, the exam I have today in school. No, the first thing we think about is our spiritual master. We wake up, we bow down on the mattress, Namo Vishnu Badaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Jaya Pataka Swami Iti Namade, Bhakti Churu Swami Dara, Bhakti Vikash Swami Dara, Bhakti Bingo Govardhan. We think of that person who's taking our hand and taking us out of this whirlpool of material existence. Oh my Lord, I'm drowning in this fathomless whirlpool of material existence. Oh you who give shelter to those who don't have shelter, please, just this one time, won't you extend your hand to save me? Rupa Goswami and Padyavali. That's how we should wake up. Not like my dad used to sing a song when he'd wake up. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Everything's coming up roses. <laughs> Everything's going my way. <laughs> my father used to sing that song. No, it's not like that. It's Dukalaya Mashashma. Wake up. I'm going to chant better than I chanted yesterday. I'm going to, I'm going to really focus on learning that new shloka today. I'm, when I offer the, the, the deities Artik, I'm going to offer it from my heart out of great gratitude. And, 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 and when I see a Vaishnava, I'm going to immediately pay my obeisances. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to work. But in the lunchtime, I'm going to read four verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and I'm going to take that prasad that my wife prepared and, and, and eat it consciously that this is Krishna's mercy. And on the way home, um, I'm going to finish my rounds. See, like this. We're constantly thinking, Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Don't forget the goal. Keep the goal in mind. And for that, we need a congregation of devotees to remind us because we... Our minds are flickering here and there, but if we always come together, our greatest strength is in numbers. The devotees, you come together like this regularly, and you have kata like this, and you chant Hare Krishna, and you take prasadam, like the tigers, like the deer, like the butterflies in the Jari Kanda forest, and like the, the, the prophecy of Haridash Thakur, that even a clump of flowers can be delivered, there's a good chance that you people here in Bharat, here in Bangalore, you can make it back to Godhead in one lifetime. In fact, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said one time at an initiation, 1933, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back home. 
back to Godhead in one lifetime. So give your heart to this process. It's so easy because it's so, so sublime. It's so much fun to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And don't forget the spiritual world for all of you. It's very close. Goloka has become Gokula in, in, in UP. Because <laughs> Krishna came and he brought the spiritual world with him. So you have to go to Vrindavan whenever you get a chance. And in that transcendental atmosphere, you'll make a quantum leap in spiritual life. Here you can make some progress. If you go to Braj, if you go to Mayapur, where the Gaudiya Vaishnavas like to, to accumulate, you, you can make a quantum leap in one week. And to help you, to serve you, we've produced this book. This book is called The Sacred Forest of Vrindavan, and specifically the Western Bank of the Jumuna. When that horrible, horrible time came, the pandemic, the COVID, I was locked down in Vrindavan. What better place could you be, have, be locked down than Vrindavan? Radharani slammed the door on me in Vrindavan. But I'm a traveler. For 52 years, I've been traveling. Three, every three days, I had to move on because that's the sannyasi's instruction. You can't stay in a place more than three days as a sannyasi. So here I am, three years in Vrindavan. So what did I do? I studied as much as I could from all the books, just like our Banu Swami from Chennai. He's, he's translated so many of Acharya's books. And I had Prabhupada, so I was reading them and studying them. And then I started giving lectures on Vrindavan. Every Friday I give a lecture just about Vrindavan. We're close to 500 lectures just about Vrindavan. They're posted every Friday on my YouTube channel, Indra Dumna Swami. YouTube, you can become a subscriber. A different personality in Vrindavan, a different holy place, a different mood, a different instruction from Prabhupada, how to live in Vrindavan. Each lecture I focus on something different. And those first lectures that I gave, you know, three or four years ago, my disciples transcribed them. Those, those lectures I gave about the, the pastimes on the western bank of Jumuna, they transcribed them and they put it in a book. It's like the ultimate Parikama book. And there's beautiful paint, uh, photographs as well. So if you go to Vrindavan with this book, and let's say you're at Radha Kund, you don't know much about Radha Kund, you open up to the page about Radha Kund, and you read about it, and you'll learn what I learned, what took me four years, you can learn in four minutes. It's the ultimate per Parikama book. I took direction from Dina Bandhu, my Parikama guru, from Bhakti Churu Maharaj, from Jaya Pataka Maharaj, from so many of my senior godbrothers. I heard their talks and incorporated it in my talks. So here's the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate guidebook. Here's Lord Shiva <coughs> about Vrindavan. And as the years go by, we'll come out with a book every year. And for, I don't know, it'll take 25 years or something like that. And you'll have a perfect book to go to Vrindavan with and just open it up and learn everything you need to know about that particular place that you're visiting. And if you can't go to Vrindavan, you can open it up in the privacy of your home and start reading. And lo and behold, you'll feel just like you're in Vrindavan. Who wants to be in Bangalore? Nobody. Well, somebody but not us, we want to be in Braj. Land ho, land ho, Braj. So to do that, just open this up, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said one day. I woke up, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote, and I saw my house had been transformed into Goloka Vrindavan. So this is my service to all of you. It's expensive because it's a first-class production. You know, the, the, the title page is heightened here, you know how they do. It's first class paper, first class uh, photographs, everything, it's, it's really, a, the, 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 um, the printer was so proud of it. <laughs> so something you can put on the table in your living room and people come by and, ooh, what's that? It's about Vrindavan. <laughs> so it's 2,500 rupees, oh my God, that's so expensive. But. Anyway, it's, I'm not here to make money. I'm a sannyasi. I don't have a bank account. I don't have a rupee to my name. I don't have a checkbook. I don't have a job. 
I just wander this world speaking Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and my disciples take care of me. So I'm not into money, but we do want to print more and more and more books. We've distributed 1,100 books in the last two weeks in South India. And we saved a few for Bangalore because I love Bangalore. And please invite me back again next year, please. I want to come back again. Okay? So my, uh, one of my secretaries, Rasika Siramani, she's going to tell you a little bit more how to do it. You see, when you open it up, there's a little uh, sticker thing here. If you write your name there and you buy the book, then you can come and I'll, I'll sign the book with a little dedication and a date like that so you can remember, you get a signed copy. And, um, but she's going to go into more detail how we're going to go about this. But before we conclude and we start selling the books, I want to thank you. My, one of my favorite places in India is with all of you because last time I came it was so ecstatic and it's been ecstatic again. I still got two more temples to visit tomorrow. I can't wait to get up tomorrow morning and go to those temples. So just a big, big thank you from my heart to all of you for inviting me here. Love you all. Looking forward to coming back. Hare Krishna.